Changing Lanes, the official podcast of BMW. Hello and welcome to this episode of Changing Lanes, the official podcast of BMW. My name is Sarah, and in today's episode, I'll be talking to someone who's breaking all sorts of barriers in the world of motorsports. Now, we all know motor racing has historically been known as a male-dominated sport. Up to now, there have been very few women who've managed to beat their male competitors at the wheel of a race car. Listen to this. In the 70 years that Formula One has existed, only two women have ever managed to qualify for and take part in a Formula One race. And that's compared to more than 700 male drivers. But... We're happy to say in recent years, women have been making enormous strides in the racing field and becoming an increasingly powerful force on the track. My guest today is one of those trailblazing female drivers, BMW Motorsport Works driver, Baitska Visser. Hello, Baitska. It's so great to have you on the podcast today. Hello. So, Baitska, our listeners can't see you, obviously, but I can because we have this little camera thing going so we can actually see each other as we speak. And um, like most of us during this corona pandemic, which is we're still in the middle of as we record this podcast, it looks like you're also at home, just like many of us working from home. But it looks like you're sitting in a very interesting chair and I see even a steering wheel. Um can you just explain or describe for our listeners what exactly it is that you're sitting in? Uh, yeah, so I'm currently sitting in my simulator. Um, I got this one at the beginning of the coronavirus. And uh, yeah, I've been spending most of my days in here. Okay, so a simulator, there's a steering wheel, there's a chair. Um, there isn't anything else around you. How does it feel? Is it really like a car? I mean, does does your chair vibrate as you drive? How does it work? Uh, no, the it doesn't have any motion. Um, but the games are quite realistic, so the feeling um, of driving is is quite good. The only thing we miss is um, yeah the g forces and the feeling of speed. But other than that, it's quite realistic. And what about sort of the physical sensations of being in a car? Are those somehow also simulated? Uh, unfortunately not. Um, yeah, as we're just sitting uh, and not moving around. But uh, yeah, so I can't wait to get back into a real car. <laughs> All right. Well, before we talk about all sorts of other things, Baitska, why don't you just tell us um, specifically what your job is these days? I mean, I introduced you as a BMW Motorsport Works driver, but tell us what that means exactly. Um, yeah, so I race for BMW um, in different things, GT3, GT4. Um, I also did the development last year of the, of the new M2. Um, yeah, so I'm staying busy with, with that. And aside from that, I also race in the W Series. And so now that racing has been put on hold because of the pandemic, and how do you continue to train from the simulator? What does a typical day look like for you? Um, well, I need to do a lot of physical training um, to still stay fit. As, yeah, those cars are, uh, some of those cars are quite tough to drive. Um, yeah, and aside from that, I spend a lot of time on my simulator. I've always wondered why uh, racing drivers have to stay so physically fit. Um, I think maybe a lot of people just assume, well, you're just sitting in a car and you have your hands on a steering wheel and that's all there is to it. Can you explain to us why it's so important for racing drivers to be so fit? Yeah, I think that's what a lot of people think, that we just sit and stare and that's it. Um, but depending on the car, like uh, a Formula car doesn't have power steering, so the steering is very hard. Um, we have a lot of G-forces on our body, up to 5G in the corners. Um, the brake pedal is not like a, a brake pedal in a normal road car. We actually have to hit like nearly 100 kilos on it to, to stop the car several times a lap. And then if you talk about GT cars, uh, we don't have air con conditioning. It can get up to like 50 degrees in the car. And uh, yeah, if you do, especially if you do endurance racing, you need to spend like two hours in the car 
um, it can get pretty hot in there. So it is, in fact, like being an athlete of sorts to be able to drive a car like that. Um, maybe is that, do you think, a reason why it hasn't been traditionally something that girls get into? I mean, you did. I've read that you became interested in cars from a very young age. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, I, I don't think the physical aspect has, has to do with um, women not, not going there since we need to be fit, but um, we are not like, let's say, the engine of the car. Um, if you talk to, ru to runners, they need to, uh, the fitter they are, the faster they run. And we just need to be fit enough to drive the car. And once uh, we are fit enough, then it doesn't matter anymore if you are stronger or faster or uh, it won't give you any performance on track. Um, yeah, I started with, with karting when I was really young. Um, my father used to race a bit in, in touring cars in Holland. And um, once he had a 24-hour race, uh, when I was three years old, and I went with him to watch and I saw a little baby kart there. And uh, yeah, apparently I came shaking back to my parents saying I want that baby card. So um, I had to back for two more years <laughs> since I was pretty young. But then yeah, yeah, on my fifth birthday, I finally got, uh, got the baby card and started driving. So your dad then was perhaps the main original influence on what got you curious about cars. But certainly, did your parents push you? to continue? Uh, no, they didn't. They just um, let me do whatever I wanted to do. And um, yeah, ever since I was young, I was uh, always like going to the karting track on Saturdays and Sundays and um, Wednesday afternoon um, out of school. So um, yeah, it was it was always my choice to, to race. Was your father then perhaps hesitant I mean, did he initially think, oh, it's cute, my daughter, she likes the carts and will let her do that as long as she wants to. Do you think he expected you to become a professional? Um, it's hard to say. Uh, at that age, you, can, you don't expect anything. You just want to have fun. But um, I know from the beginning, we, we were quite um, into it. Uh, yeah, like I said, driving two and a half days a week uh, while I was still going to school. Um, just always uh, trying to be the best already at that age. Yet again, this is something that's not very typical of little girls. So how did your friends respond to your hobby, as it were, when you were still very young? What did they think about it? Uh, to be honest, my friends don't know me any anywhere else uh, since I started so young. That's uh, around when you start school. So, um, yeah, since I started school, all my friends knew I was, I was going to the karting track, so they were used to it. And were you the only girl there back then? Uh, most of the time, yes. Um, sometimes you would see like one or two other girls, but uh, I think most of the time I was the only one, yeah. And can you remember when you were that small, did you wonder why there were so few girls who were there? Um, I didn't actually, because um, I didn't feel any, any different than them. I mean, at, at that age, we were all young and, and having fun, and um, we were going from, from track to track, seeing the same people. So we, are, um, we were actually all just, just friends and hanging out and, and then driving on track. Um, I don't think you, I started to, to feel that until I was like maybe 12 or 13 when you go internationally and then uh, you meet like a lot of new people and they are like, oh, she's a girl. Um, and then, it, then it's a bit different. But until that point, uh, you don't feel it. And as you were growing up, did you have role models in motorsports, women perhaps, that you look up to? Um, well, the last Formula One driver that was a woman was um, before I was born. So that was, uh, yeah, a long time ago. And um, yeah, I never really had uh, someone to look up to. I tried to always focus uh, on, on myself, but 
yeah, other than that, like a little kid just looks at who wins the races. So at my time in Formula One, that was Schumacher. Um, so I was definitely looking at him. But throughout my career, I, I never really had one person that um, I admired or something like that. Um, I, yeah, I just looked at, looked at everyone. And when did you go from feeling that this is just something fun that you do as a hobby, as a child, to thinking this is something that you want to do with your life? Um, I think from the beginning, I've always said uh, I want to be a Formula One driver. Uh, but I think any little kid says that about whatever sport they do. Um, I think the moment it got serious was probably in 2010 when I was racing in shifter cards in um, European and World Championships and started to win races there. Um, I think that's that's when I started to get serious and like, oh, maybe uh, we can actually have a good future in this. Well, you know, I mentioned it in the beginning. There have been a few great female racing drivers. You know, the, the most famous ones, perhaps uh, Michelle Mouton and Jutta Kleinschmidt. But as you know, they've always been the minority. And now that you're in this business yourself, why do you think there are so many more men in racing than women. I mean, that there's a, m a minority of women, maybe there are some reasons for that, but why are there so few, even to this day? Um, I think it all starts with karting. Um, at, at a young age, I think there are not a lot of girls trying. Um, and then obviously, um, if you look at like higher categories, let's say out of um, 100 uh, guys, only one guy will make it. If per 100 guys, only maybe one or two girls are trying in karting, then obviously it takes takes a long time before a, uh, a girl actually reaches the top. So I think karting is, is where it has to start with more more girls. And um, I think that that's already changing. Um, I went to the karting track over the winter. And um, yeah, from what I remember, I was always like the only one or maybe one or two more girls. but. When I walked around there, I saw so many girls driving. So I think it's already changing, but it will take time. As yeah, it has to start on from a from a young age. And how do you think more girls can just even find out about karting or have an opportunity to try something like that? Um, probably if they watch it more on TV. Um, yeah, I mean that. I think that's what anything, you watch something on TV, if you like it, you're gonna try it. Um, karting is, is quite easy to try. You can go to a rental car track and, and just give it a go. And um, yeah, if you like it, you continue. And if you don't, then, then it, that's also fine. And what does your family think about you now? I mean, just watching your development from this little kid who went carding every weekend to where you are now? That's a hard question. Um, I don't know. I hope they're happy. I mean, do you feel in a way that you're living the dream that your father may have had somehow? Um, I mean, my, my father was always racing at uh, a local level and he started quite late, so he, he never... Um, had the dream anymore to, to reach the top. But um, I think he, he's happy that he managed to uh, help me reach it. I'm curious about what it is like to compete in a field where you're one of the few women. Do you feel somehow that people judge you more? perhaps even than your male counterparts? I mean, women talk about this in other fields, that they have to be even better than their male counterparts to achieve the same level. Do you feel that? Um, always a bit. I mean, in the end, you always need to perform. Um, but I think this is more coming from outside of the motorsport world. Um, I think if you look at like other drivers, teams and stuff, they would respect me a lot quicker than um, people that don't know that much about motorsports, I think. 
Well, we also know that you're a driver in Formula W, which is a women-only race series. And while some people may view this as a controversial choice, you know, on the one hand, it gives women drivers a fantastic platform to show off their talent. But on the other hand, there is, of course, the question of whether it somehow isolates women from the men when, you know, in an ideal world, they should be able to compete equally with men. How do you see it? Um, yeah, that, that's exactly the thing. If it was to, to separate men and women, I would have never done it. Um, because I believe we can equally race against guys. Um, but the idea of W Series is not to, to separate us. It's to help us, give us another platform, um, giving us the chance to show what we can do and then hopefully um, grow further into the next categories. And um, yeah, that, that's why, why I really like it. And uh, yeah, I just believe the more you drive, the better you become. So this just gives me another opportunity to, to improve myself. And um, I think it has shown that already that it's working and we've gotten um, a lot of people change their minds over the year. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the reason why I like it. And perhaps it can offer a platform for the little girls uh, who can see women and perhaps see, find new role models. Do you think that's a possibility? Yeah, exactly. Like uh, little girls that want to start karting actually see women race on TV now. Um, so that, that helps them and that shows them it's it's not a guy's only sport, it's also for women. So it may, maybe makes the, the entry level for them to, to start karting uh, easier. Well, that said, um, there does seem to be some sort of persistent, oh, I don't know, gender stereotyping, if you will. I mean, I... In preparing for our talk today, I found an article about you in a German automotive magazine called AutoBuild. It's, it was a while back, and they called you the hot junior driver some time ago. Um, there was a photo gallery of you and, you know, a picture of you in a bikini. And, you know, I really wondered, would there have been this kind of title for a male driver? What do you think, and how do you feel about being portrayed like this? I have no idea. I have actually never seen that uh, that interview or what what it is. But um, yeah, I I just like to see the positive of it. So a hot junior driver can also mean like um, I'm the one that's being talked about at the moment. So a very diplomatic response, <laughs> response. Um, by Scott. But I I want to press a little bit more on this issue. Do you feel sexism in your field? Do you feel treated differently and somehow discriminated against as a woman who's in motorsports? Not that much, actually. Um, yeah, I think that's quite similar to the to the other question. Uh, in, like inside the motorsport world, it's fine. But more the people from outside, like if you have like an interview online, like the comments under that, um, they're a bit. But um, from the people inside, like the, the teams and, and other drivers, I actually have respect. Well, that does sound very positive. Pretty impressed to hear you say that. But I get the feeling, Baitska, that that also has a lot to do with how you are. I mean, you come across as an incredibly driven person, no pun intended. Um, and, you know, you know what you want and what your goals are. And there is even a story about you winning a race with a broken back. Is this true? Did this really happen? Uh, yeah, that, that did happen. Yeah. Um, that was back in 2012. Um, I had a race in, uh, in Formula A D at C, which is Formula 4 now. And uh, yeah, in qualifying, I had a brake failure. So I couldn't brake and went straight into the wall. Um, they instantly suspected I had broken my back. So they sent me to the hospital. And then uh, in the hospital, they took the, the x-rays wrong. So they never saw that I broke my back. Um, so they told me I was fine. So then I said, look, look if, if I haven't anything broken, I'm just gonna drive tomorrow. 
um, regardless of the pain I can't I mean I haven't anything broken so I'll just bite through the pain which is what I did and I actually won the race and um, yeah then one or two days later I, I started to struggle to walk so I actually went to um, a clinic um, to kind of with the idea can you get me help me get rid of this pain and they looked at me and they said this is not just pain and they put me in the MRI and they they saw that I actually broke my back oh my god I, I mean I can't even imagine how you were able to drive a car win a race get up walk around with a broken back what happened to you then did were you immobilized I mean, what happened well actually the, the driving parts um while we race, we have so much um, adrenaline. Uh, so while I was racing, I wasn't having any pain. I was completely fine. Um, but the moment the checkered flag fell, um, the pain came back. And uh, yeah, from, from the moment I came out of the car, I struggled to walk. But um, yeah, so then when they found out I broke my back, um, I got like a whole corset uh, to stabilize my back. And, um, yeah, then obviously I had to miss the next race. I think that's okay, but it's good that you missed a race with a broken back. Good gracious. Um, tell us a bit about what's in store for you in the future. I mean, you've achieved so much already at such a young age. Um, how old are you now? You're still super young. 25. 25, good Lord. Uh, yeah, like what is in store for you? Um, I don't know. I just want to drive as much as I can. Um, I think one of my goals at the moment is to, to reach Formula E. So I will work hard to to get there. And um, yeah, in the meantime, I just want to take every opportunity I get to race and uh, win as much as I can. Now, Baitska, you say that you're interested in driving uh, for Formula E. How come? What makes it interesting for you? Um, it's still quite a quite a new championship, and it's really upcoming. Um, and like all the manufacturers are are joining now as well, so the level is is really high. And uh, also, if you look at the drivers, they're they're all really good. So. Um, yeah, that just makes it very interesting for me. And uh, yeah, hopefully one day I can, can race there. And if you're able to send a message to young women, young girls who are curious about motorsports, what would be your message to them? I would say, I mean, there are rental car tracks everywhere. Just go there once, try it out. Um, see if you like it and if you do then uh, you can continue practicing maybe find a local team to, to help you out and um, yeah just slowly work your way up through there and do you believe girls can achieve anything that boys can are we going to see a lot more women in Formula 1 racing? definitely uh, yeah like I said just more girls need to try and then more girls will, will reach the top do you think it's important to be a role model for young girls and women who want to get into motorsports? I mean, if, if it helps them to uh, to start racing and to get further up the, la the ladder, then definitely yes. And what do you think needs to happen so that we see more women drivers participate in motorsport racing? Um, yeah, I think it needs to start back in karting. Um, I think if you look at all the, the top racing drivers, they've all started with karting. That's where you, you learn all the basics and you're able to, to practice a lot and make a lot of mistakes and, and try everything. So, um, yeah, I, I think that's, that's where everyone should start. And, um, yeah, hopefully then in the future they will progress to, to cars and, um, yeah, race here. Where do you live? Are you in the Netherlands? Um, yes, I live in Snake, which is in the north. Do you know when you'll be able to get back in a car on the racetrack? Any sense? I mean, the Netherlands seem to be relaxing a lot of their coronavirus restrictions. Do you have a date? Um, I don't know, actually. Um, we have to wait. I have driven already one day again, 
in the, the M2 on the Nordschleife. Um, but yeah, like the W Series Championship will only start racing again next year. Um, because there's people from all over the world coming there and it's just too complicated to organize now. And uh, yeah, with BMW we need to see, hopefully soon. Weitzke, you are such an inspiration. Thank you so, so much for sharing all of your thoughts with us on Changing Lanes. Uh, everybody, that was the BMW Motorsport works driver, Weitzke Visser. Thank you for being an inspiration. Thank you. And that's it for this week's episode of Changing Lanes. If you like this episode, please do subscribe to our podcast wherever you listen for more. I'm Sarah. We'll see you next time.